This is Matthew Cratter from Trader University, and today I want to talk about how Bitcoin took over Christmas dinner. If you're interested in Bitcoin, momentum stocks, or if you just want to see what I'm trading or investing in, be sure to hit that subscribe button. So the last time we spoke was before, uh, before the holiday break on December 22nd. Bitcoin was trading around $23,000 per Bitcoin. Today, as I'm recording this, we're above $27,000. So I think all of you did your work talking about Bitcoin over the Christmas or holiday dinner table. What's really extraordinary about this move is that if we look back in March for a brief period of time, in March of 2020, Bitcoin was actually trading around $4,000 per Bitcoin. So this uh, four or five day move that we've just seen in Bitcoin actually is as large as the total value of Bitcoin was back in March of 2020. This is how compounding of wealth works, that you can get a move that's basically, if your cost basis on some of your Bitcoin was four or 5,000, you've basically made 100% on your money just over, or 100% on your cost basis, I should say, just over these few days. Obviously, a lot of uh, celebrities have begun to talk about Bitcoin as well. This was an interesting tweet I saw from uh, KSI saying what in the world is going on with Bitcoin. For those of you who don't know, KSI is a YouTuber and a rapper and a boxer and very influential uh, among, among certain generations. So the fact that he's talking about Bitcoin, this is how Bitcoin really spreads. It spreads by the brand, it spreads by word of mouth, and it spreads over the Christmas dinner table as people are bragging about their investment returns and maybe the person who was talking about Bitcoin over the Christmas uh, feast table a year ago doesn't sound quite as crazy or conspiratorial uh, this year as he or she did a year ago. Now, Bitcoin seems to be tracking the stock to flow price really well. I'll link to this. This, this is Digitalik's version of the Plan B stock to flow chart. And we can see right here that we're just right on the line, maybe slightly above it, but we're certainly not in any blow off territory as we had in 2017 and uh, 2014, 2015 as well. So it looks like the institutions are following Plan B's model quite closely. And this is quite, this is quite bullish. We can see by next summer, one version of the model gets up to $100,000 uh, per Bitcoin. He has uh, approximately three models. There's, there are two that are very similar where he rounded numbers. There's the uh, the, the uh, cross-asset stock-to-flow, which we'll talk about in a minute. If you're interested in following the stock-to-flow uh, multiple, you can either just check this chart, or you can also, there's a Twitter account that looks like it was done by Bitstein, where he uh, uh, every day he tweets the model price. So for example, on December 27th, this is the most recent data point, the model price is uh, for Bitcoin 26,678 actual price just a couple hundred dollars below that it looks like we're trading back above the model price right now. I thought this uh, this tweet from at 21 bullish was very interesting, very nice way of uh, explaining how we could easily get to 800,000 or even a million in this current uh, four year cycle or bull run. The most bullish part of the cycle is always the 12 to 18 months after the halving. Uh, we just had the halving in May of 2020. But what I like about this tweet is uh, at 21 bullish points out that back in 2017, we had an overshoot of the plan B stock to flow model. The price of Bitcoin overshot the model price by st two standard deviations. So the model price was about 6,200 and two standard deviations above that, according to the model, was approximately 20,000. So if something similar happens, if we apply this to this stock to flow cross asset model, which basically looks at Bitcoin as a store of value and compares it to things like silver and gold, and as well as Bitcoin in its previous stock to flow uh, incarnations, uh, Plan B has a, a, a price target of 288 thousand dollars sometime between 2020 and 2024 for this model but if you get two standard deviations above that as at 21 bullish points out that gets you to 864,000 uh, in 
possibly before uh, before December of 2021. Then this seems unbelievable. It's uh, but a couple months ago, it'd be hard to believe that Bitcoin would be trading at 27 or 28 thousand dollars. So anything is certainly possible. If you're enjoying this video, make sure you hit that subscribe button as well. I also wanted to draw your attention to a very interesting article here that was uh, posted on Medium about this generational shift, the uh, baby boomers passing on 20, uh, 68 trillion to their children, not really talking about Gen X, which is what I am, but talking about the millennial generation, which is much larger. And as part of this, you have financial advisors who are trying to get an idea of what millennials and Gen Z are interested in. In this uh, survey, it was just 700, 700 clients, but they did find that more than two thirds said that they preferred Bitcoin to gold as a safe, av safe haven asset. This is something I've been arguing. This is a sort of a counterpoint that I make to Peter Schiff's arguments about the history of Bitcoin. Uh, previous generations love physical bookstores. Physical bookstores have almost completely disappeared. This is what happens with technological change and the demographic turnover. So definitely uh, we have been seeing flows out of gold and into Bitcoin by institutional investors, and it should only continue as millennials begin to inherit their parents or grandparents' uh, grandparents' wealth. Another funny quote from this, uh, three-year study of 10,000 millennials, the majority, 71%, reported that they would rather go to the dentist than listen to anything banks have to say. I think Warren Buffett probably has been picking up on this and realizes what's been happening. This may be uh, one of the reasons that he's been selling down all of his bank positions. But what we're witnessing here is a complete revamping of the financial system. Bitcoin is going to be at the center of this probably as a treasury reserve asset or some sort of settlement asset. Certainly store value for high net worth individuals and corporations and maybe something more, maybe a reserve asset for central banks. And all the demographics are definitely driving in this direction as well. I finally wanted to finish up with a metric that I haven't talked about before, but that I do keep an eye on. This is called NVT. And it's a metric that was invented by Willy Wu. You can uh, follow his uh, feed on Twitter, Willy Wu Twitter. Uh, but basically NVT is calculated by, you take the total market cap of Bitcoin and you divide it by its daily transaction volume, both of those uh, both of those numbers denominated in US dollars. And what you get is you get a nice chart that shows you uh, basically the blue, pr the blue price right here is the price of Bitcoin. NVT is that, that uh, metric that we just talked about, market cap divided by daily transaction volume. And Willy Wu's thesis, which makes some sense to me, is that the NVT price is a stable, uh, sort of a stable floor or an ever up moving floor for institutional investors and long term investors in Bitcoin. Uh, we can see here that he's saying that this rally to 28K has been strongly supported by spot buying, not a blow off top. And what this chart shows here is that there's a premium. Uh, this purple line down here measures the premium or the price, uh, the market price of Bitcoin, uh, what sort of premium it's trading at to the NVT price. And it's sort of a, I guess it's sort of a timing indicator. But what I think it's more interesting is uh, thinking about NVT as some sort of long-term investor valuation number. In other words, it can be even considered a floor for Bitcoin at this point. Obviously, Bitcoin can do whatever it wants, but I think it's it's good to think about different metrics and try to think about what in institutional investors will be looking at and where they'll really step up their buying. NVT price, uh, his next tweet, can be used as an estimate of the price floor supported by long-term investors. It's currently $17,000 and rising fast. Lately, the best speculative sellers have managed is 10% above this. So if you add 10% to uh, 17,000, you get uh, you get approximately just under twenty thousand. So Willy Wu is saying it's unlikely we'll see prices on Bitcoin below twenty thousand again. Now, obviously, anything can happen. We could have flash crashes, but I think that uh, you can't ask for a better chart than we're seeing here, 
with Bitcoin, trading above the 50-day moving average, 50-day moving average, above the 200-day moving average. And we had such a big move over the holidays, which I presume was mostly retail buying. I don't think institutional investors are as active, uh, especially over holiday periods like this, much less, uh, much less weekends. So very interesting that we're still holding this level, even as the institutional flows begin to come in on Monday morning. And I think it's just extremely bullish for Bitcoin. The shorts are getting completely annihilated. None of the altcoins are keeping up with Bitcoin. And it's just a very exciting time to be watching Bitcoin. We'll also be watching very closely the transition to the new year from 1231 to January 1st, which is a holiday. And then, of course, the uh, when things open back up, the Monday after that, I guess that would be the uh, the fourth. This will be when a lot of hedge funds, a lot of institutions will be able to deploy new dollars into Bitcoin. You can imagine if you're raising raising a new fund to invest in Bitcoin and it begins the calendar year of 2021, you can't buy Bitcoin on 1231, but you can start buying it on January 1st. So I wouldn't be surprised to see a natural gap up as well because of that as the institutional flows really kick in. We're at the point now where every single bank is going to have to get involved in Bitcoin. The traditional banks, the Bank of Americas, the Wells Fargo's, etc., they can't leave this to PayPal and Square and some of the other upstarts, Coinbase, etc. They're going to need to get into this game, as will all the mutual fund com- companies. You can't imagine a Fidelity or some other mutual fund company not having a Bitcoin option uh, at some point in the next 12 months. And uh, why let why would these uh, these large uh, companies let GBTC uh, get all the the Bitcoin flows? So success begets success, uh, as as I've taught you on this channel. You often do best by picking stocks or picking a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin that's hitting new all time highs. Everyone who's ever bought it and held it has a profit. And the price action really tells you as well what's going on with the fundamentals and gives you a good idea of the flows into this space. Still a very small space, about 500 billion market cap, the size of a large S&P 500 company, not a mega company, but still very, very small. As the market cap increases, it makes it possible for larger and larger institutional investors to begin to participate. And that's when we'll really see uh, the acceleration of the price. And that's how we get to 100K, 200K, 300K and above in the next 12 months. If you found this video helpful, be sure to hit that subscribe and like button. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.